Hello all and welcome to Maker Centered Learning Can Happen in Any Classroom. Thank you for joining us. My name is Paul Shercliffe. You can find me on Twitter at Shirky17. My website is my name, www.paulshercliffe.org. And my email is my name also, paul at paulshercliffe.org. There is a bit.ly for these slides, bit.ly slash MCL, capital M, capital C, capital L, slides, lowercase, 2022. My goal is to give you some description of the facets of maker-centered learning, give you some classroom examples, talk about some school-wide examples, and then share some general thoughts and ideas and resources about maker-centered learning. First thing you know is that maker-centered learning is not a new concept. It really is a mashup of those great pedagogies and ideas we were taught about years ago from Dewey, Montessori, Papert, Piaget, and Vygotsky. You know, the words of whole, whole child, choice, interest, curiosity, experiential, purposeful, time to explore, constructivism, constructionism, social, peers, student-centered, play, all those things. It's a mashup of all that. It's not one more thing to add to your plate. It's really the way to be doing the learning. And I believe it's the best way for us to learn. At the core is designing, building, creating of an artifact. We make stuff, we prototype, sometimes more than one prototype. Then there are conversations that you can have from it or around it. Those conversations can be different for each learner and the teacher weaves the necessary topic content into these conversations. The artifact is kind of like the conduit through which all the learning happens, and it could be a demonstration of the learning. It's really about conversations. The learning and assessment are in those conversations. The ones that you have with a student or a small group of students could be the ones that students have amongst themselves and you just overhear. These conversations could be while they're building as well as after they're done creating. The conversations, the learning, the assessment, those are all ongoing things. Again, the conversations probably should be different for each learner because they're all coming from a different point and we're still weaving in the content that we need for our topic. The emphasis is process over product. Making of that artifact is important, but not necessarily the be all end all. You can have the conversations without finishing the artifact. So learning can still happen. Obviously we want the students to learn how to be successful and to feel successful. So it's something so they, you know, as often as we can, we want to finish the product, but sometimes we just don't have enough time for everyone to finish making something in class. So we need to be open to come in when you can to finish it, take it home to finish it. We got to have those options. It's one of the difficult parts of maker-centered learning, helping every individual to be as success successful as possible within our constraints. Making opens up and utilizes multiple parts of the brain at the same time and bridges them to work together. Making is naturally transcurricular, blending various disciplines. Often it mixes them so you don't even know where one stops and one starts. Everyone knows something that you don't know. Give them the opportunity to share what they know. One time we were making wooden puzzle pieces, wooden cubes, uh, Soma puzzles for those of you who know. Some students were coloring them with markers, some were painting with acrylics or fingernail polish. One student wanted to hydro dip, and I didn't know anything about that. I didn't even know what it was. So they told me what it was and what they needed. I just had to say, okay. They found what they needed in the room. People always ask, why do you have so much stuff in your room? Well, my reply is, I never know what a student might need. They hydro dipped their pieces. Then they showed others how to do it. Some people call this distributed teaching and learning. Everyone's a teacher. 
Everyone's a learner in a makerspace. One of the great advantages of maker-centered learning is that there are so many modalities and ways of making. They can be digital or analog. They can be low cost or expensive, low tech or high tech. We've got drawing, painting, modeling, coding, robotics, poster design, video, podcast, gardening, woodworking, plays, songs, just, just a myriad of things, an infinite number. Because there are so many, every learner should be able to find some that speak to them, find their niche, find what they're good at. Students might already be doing things that we wouldn't have thought of. Let them give it a try. Listen to them. Give them space and time to try some things. You don't have to know how to do everything. You can't be expected to. You just have to be comfortable with exploring the unknown with others. Remember, everyone is a teacher and everyone's a learner. One time a student was explaining their work to me, what they had done so far, what they had learned, and telling me what they needed to do next. Well, there was a student nearby who overheard and said, I already did that. I can help them with that next step. Which was great because this is from a student that normally just keeps to themselves and struggles with getting steps accomplished, but they had gotten things done and wanted to help somebody else. MCL helps develop agency. Students learn to know what they know and what is next. They love sharing and helping others. Building confidence is important. Empowered is a good word that we like to throw around a lot. MCL helps with that. Maker-centered learning is very much learner-centered and offers many opportunities for voice and choice. The conversations come from their perspective. What do they want to make or how do they want to make it? What materials do they want to use? There are often many paths to get to our learning goal. Sometimes we might have to limit the choices and give them a list of options for our own sanity, but we still need to listen to that one student who often has a different idea or a different path. Making allows students entry points to the learning from their own point of view or perspective. Meet the student where they are. A conversation with the learner who will probably be an engineer starts very differently than the one who will probably be an artist. But both conversations can evolve to discuss the content that is at hand. Studying Newton's laws through mousetrap cars, the engineer wants it to go the furthest. They want to deal with the function. The artist wants it to look good. They're going after the form. We can have both of those conversations. They can tweak their design to incorporate what they want, and we can still weave in ideas about Newton while that is happening. When they start from their, from their own perspective or viewpoint, conversations are much easier to have, and the learning is in those conversations. Maker-centered learning fosters the seeds of education that people like to talk about. What drives me a little bit nuts is that for some reason, people always leave out the most important one. Curiosity. The others follow from it. Creativity, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, community. Yes, makers build communities, as well as help their community. There's a lot of seeds you could probably come up with for education, and Twitter PLN did that one time. Uh, some people were taking a road trip to ISTE and everyone's popping up with C's that they thought that were good for education. People like to talk about creativity a great deal and for good reasons. There are many benefits to, to developing a culture of creativity. Learning activities become multidisciplinary. Self-expression is prevalent. Thinking and problem solving are needed and happen. Stress and anxiety are reduced. Our minds end up in a happy, fun zone. We feel a sense of purpose. We feel pride. We find others with similar passion. Our ability to focus increases. So does our risk taking. We come to learn that progress takes iteration. We start down a path to innovation and we understand that learning is a lifelong journey. Making is just good for us. It helps us find those sense, a sense of accomplishment. 
We remember things that we make, not tests that we take. Dan Ryder shared via Twitter an example of a student that couldn't stop sharing the chessboard they had made. Look what I did on my own. Can you picture that student smiling as she shows off her work? Pride, accomplishment, success. I made something that I can use. We are born makers. Mud pies, blanket forts, sticks or swords, tea time. It's how we understand the world. But for some reason we stop. Then wonder why we don't understand the world. When really the world is a STEM maker lab waiting for us to explore it. What kind of maker are you? This would be a good time to stop and share. You know, what do you make? What are you into? I've always been into electronic gadgets and technology. About five years ago, I got into woodworking and created a garage workshop. So we'll take a few minutes and share about that. Here are some of the answers from one school. Just look at the variety of things. These are from the teachers. Things that they like to do, like to make. This seems to be like a good activity to do with staff. Help them find people with common interests. Now, we got baking several times. Somebody who's really good at fried chicken. Karagami, which I don't know what that is. You know, beadwork, bracelets, necklaces, we've got jewelry. I, I don't know why we don't do more with jewelry. That seems like a good history, cultural connection. Um, making food disappear. I'm really good at that too. Painting. Yeah, I'm not good at that at all. Um, so many ways that we... Poetry, musical compositions, watercolor paintings. So many different ways that they could do. And, you know, now that you have a partner in crime, you know, we do this as a, as a staff... And we find someone else that likes doing a similar thing, you know, if we can get along with them. Um, how could you incorporate the making that you like to do into a classroom learning experience? Can you start to picture the idea of teach like a pirate day? And if you don't know what that is, contact me and I'll let you, let you know what that is. You know, do this kind of thing with the kids. See what things they already do. And what, what do they already make? There's kids that make stuff. Maybe just help them find others that have those similar interests. Um, there are kids that draw, the kid that awesome draw, awesome artists, um, musicians, uh, kids that make comics, all sorts of things. Help them find each other. And then how can we use that in the classroom? That's the important thing. Maker is a mindset. It's a way of approaching things. There is a willingness to try new things. I can fail. I'll just try again and eventually get something. I can take things apart and understand them. I can mash things up and make something viable. I can manipulate things in the world to fit me or to help my community. I can impact the world around me. Ideation, prototype, iteration. If I'm given time and space and support, I can do things. John Spencer made a nice graphic about some of the offshoots of maker mindset, things that come because of developing this mindset. Empathy, because we learn with it and we learn to begin with it when we want to make things. Explorers, we want to know how things work, how we can adjust and adapt them. Engaged, you know, we tend to have more focus and attention when we uh, have this mindset. We're risk takers, we're divergent. We think differently and see, you know, see that all people are different. You know, that outside of the box kind of thing or get rid of the box kind of thing. Connections. We, we, we put different ideas together. We put different people together. We're problem solving. Uh, learners build competence and confidence with processes, with materials, with tools. You know, those are important things to, to deal with when you, when you have this mindset. You know, inventive and innovation comes from this. I think that maker mindset helps us to discover our passions and interests. It's another reason why we need really need to get this to kids. Because I think part of what school should be is about helping them find their passions and interests. 
what you know, we got to find out where, what kind of impact they want to make on the world. Um, now it's going to change next month, next year, and that's okay, as long as we help them keep looking for it, and help them help them keep working towards it and getting better at things. <laughs>